My father would keep making calls to me and my boyfriend. I would call him back using rectel.co.uk and speak the words, Bastard, stop calling here. Stop calling me. Stop calling my boyfriend and all kinds of people and the police about me. If you don't stop, I will kill myself. In a twinkling, the police would arrive. I fancy the police came faster than if murderers had been present. They would force me to get into an ambulance and threaten to drive me to jail if I did not cooperate, even though nothing was wrong with me. You have a legal right to refuse to board the ambulance, but if you refuse, we will put you in jail. The cops would say, would it have been legal to put me in jail for refusing to board an ambulance? I doubted it, but realized these were the police. If they wanted to put me in jail, they would make up lies about me, so that jailing me would become lawful. If more than one cop told a lie about me, that would become an absolute truth that could not be overcome in any court of law. I had never had that kind of bad experience in my life. Nonetheless, that is what I believed would happen if I refused. Police orders. By hook or crook, the police would play to win at every ball game. With huge and nasty fellows towering over me, I gave them no opportunity to hurt me any more than asking me to board an ambulance. The paramedics knew the police had called an ambulance. So they transported me, quietly, without getting angry with me for using an ambulance while hale and hearty. When I arrived at Accident and Emergency Hillingdon Hospital, I would be seen last. The doctor would take my blood pressure and temperature and then I would take a bus home late the same night. I have a thick binder from the Pembroke and one from the police, making a subject access request from two different departments of the same incidents. I also have a third binder of hospital visits. The Pembroke binder has reports of Pembroke men coming to my door and banging it and all kinds of catty remarks. Plus they were misrepresenting to other departments as if I was engaging with them. If I was willing to engage with them and lieutenant would have opened the door as soon as they would savagely kick. Perhaps females or both males and females raised in the UK would give Pembroke 100% compliance. If they banged and banged, I knew my legal right to refuse. At some moments, they kicked so hard I felt worried something might happen to the door. But no they were not the police. There would be serious trouble if they broke the door. My boyfriend had given permission to ignore the terrifying banging, taking that small risk of door breakage. In cultures where I had lived, before the UK, 2004 to 2018, women existed, who would refuse things like that. The sequence of events I have detailed about above were my call to my father, as detailed above, followed by the arrival of the London Metropolitan Police, them forcing me to board an ambulance which took me to Hillingdon Hospital Accident and Emergency, my waiting till late at night and going home after briefly meeting the doctor. These events which started and ended on the same day, involved only the Met Police and Hillingdon Hospital Accident and Emergency because Pembroke staff did not work at any hospital. The Pembroke however were able to write comments about these events they did not attend. The hospital reports were commented on by Pembroke. The Pembroke did not work for the hospital or police force. They did not work on either of their premises. The Pembroke were not involved in this sequence of events and they did not attend these events and were not called. The Pembroke Mental Health Center, which only received these incidents as hearsay evidence, functioned as a sort of godfather, to my hospital reports, 
which were about a visit to the accident and emergency of Hillingdon Hospital under the above-mentioned circumstances. It may be that Pembroke was an interested party in my police-ordered accident and emergency visits, so they were sent my incident reports by police and hospital to write comments. It is not clear if their comments were relevant but I suppose they had the right to add their own comments. Once Pembroke had written on my medical record against my age the words and quot, prime minister and quot, and close to religion the word and quot, Hindu and quot. The Pembroke, who had been told by my parents that I am a Hindu believed I was psychotic to believe otherwise. They wanted psychiatrists to imprison and deport me for the psychosis. The Pembroke male staff were kicking and banging on the door when I was alone at home. On one occasion, I opened the door to find four black men ducking their heads quickly to crouch behind the wall on the right side of the short staircase leading up to my boyfriend's entrance. As I explained, Pembroke is a multiracial community of non-skilled persons originating from socially backward communities. Black people have a lot to offer the world. The black men who banged and kicked the door were just negative personalities, there being negative personalities in all races. You know nobody has a legal right to pursue a relationship with another person who is unwilling. If they were medical people, they would not spend all day kicking the door. A doctor normally does not force treatment even if the patient would die without it. The goal of the male Pembroke employees who prowled outside the house with walkie-talkies covertly was to catch me unawares when I opened the door to leave the house. Their ultimate goal was to hook me up with Pembroke employees who possessed female genitalia and perform woman-to-woman Duda Macy. I rarely saw the Pembroke people's faces and did not have direct contact with them. I had visited the Pembroke once in 2007 for less than half an hour when urged to go there, and found him to be foul. I did not go again, except once in 2010 accompanied by my boyfriend briefly to request them to stop kicking and banging the front door on a regular basis. Just want to mention one quies thing is that I thought if I had a serious objection to my father making calls that the proper action would be for him to stop making those calls. I had kept saying bastard stop calling all I will kill myself. If the police the Pembroke, and my father genuinely believed I was mentally unstable. They should have been doubly careful to stop those calls, because of mentally unstable. Person is much more likely to comment suicide. If you believe that someone is crazy and will commit suicide if you call them, you would stop calling them unless you do intend to drive them to suicide. That goes for my father the Pembroke and the Metropolitan Police. Calling one's mother or father names such as and quot, bastard and quot, is uncommon in the human race. It does happen occasionally in all cultures. It is a non-religious and non-sentimental behavior discouraged by all mainstream religions of the world. The prevalent religion of the United Kingdom or Ireland is atheism, according to the opinion of certain world organizations. Calling the UK a non-religious country is not contradicted by the fact that the church is not the head of state. If it was, Mr. Rishi Sunak, who is a Hindu, could probably not be allowed to be a head of state. Nor is the United Kingdom a Hindu state. The justice system does not closely mirror Christian principles. Therefore, there should be no punishment from the justice system based on religion for calling your father names, nor does the legal code impose a punishment. Also countries where religion is part of the constitution are not likely to legally punish persons who called their 
fathers' names. The law in any country is usually independent of what is morally right and wrong. And the individual's passions and opinions about what is right and wrong are not supposed to influence the verdict. Britain is also not a stranger to this principle. The British have abolished gender equality and have granted a virtual trophy of equality to its female subjects without having to possess merits in that direction. They aim at having a happy British race, independent of race or skin color. They have pride about the characteristics of this race as supreme, disrespecting all others. The discrimination is not based on being a Negro or a Chinese. But whether your behavior and personality adheres closely to the recommendations for the British race. Although everywhere in the world, fewer women than men under the same provocation from their father would raise a hand against him. In all countries with a wild element, gender equality. Amidst oppressive conditions and poverty, and available on the menu, and women who take it up can thrive. In fact, my father, with his old-fashioned and disciplinarian tactic, and mother as well, sowed the seeds for the development of equal intelligence. I feel it is British custom to punish terribly gender-equal behavior of women so that their prototype for a woman, who lacks those brain reactions of anger and frustrations normally experienced and socially acceptable for males. Older people like me and those born and raised outside the United Kingdom might remember the concept of being beneath a man. Women who have committed serious crimes, all the way up to murder, in Britain, often ethnic minorities, who demonstrated the beneath a man behaviors have been historically acquitted in the United Kingdom. You can understand why I am punished by British justice for calling my father bastard. Hell hath no fury more than a woman scorned. This refers to anger not just behavior. So also many people in the UK feel tremendous anger towards such behaviors. It is also comparable to India's honor killings.